Hey, what's up? It's Greg from Fisherman Tech Wars, and today is Tuesday, April 4th. Taking a stroll here on the Mid-Island Surf. Ah, it's about 10 a.m. I guess it's mid-tide, uh, dropping. 7 o'clock was high tide, and I guess about 1 o'clock will be low tide. Uh, if you want to take a look at the updated fish report at fishinglbi.com, I just threw up a nice detailed report last night. Some good fishing action taking place in the area, the local waters, and also the greater region. Uh, some better fish starting to show up. Definitely somewhat of a roller coaster ride here the last couple weeks uh, with the storms kind of coming and going. Springtime kind of uh, is always somewhat of a high and low with temperatures. Um, you start getting those early uh, cold mornings, uh, cold nights, and then obviously uh, when the sunny days are here, the, the warmer, uh, say, days and afternoons and um, you know into the evening to the sunset sessions uh, there's some fish taking place some good fishing taking place in the bay side of lbi most of the actions on worms um, the warmer days when the action's a little better uh, the anglers are catching on some on some uh, soft baits uh, like uh, kettle creek paddle tails uh, no live bait needed awesome swimming plugs as well i think you'll start seeing a little bit of a popper bite starting up here in the next couple days maybe a couple weeks uh, as we transition here into the uh, better part of the springtime season. I guess the full moon is uh, a day or two away. I think that is probably on Thursday. I think, I think it's Wednesday night or Thursday is the full moon. So that's definitely a new uh, transition period of time. Uh, anybody who's been out and about and roaming around, um, spring has kind of sprung. We got some, some buds popping. The mainland, obviously, was much warmer there. Uh, it was happening much sooner, but just here on LBI, things are really starting to pop out right now as springtime is upon us and things are um, you know, progressing into the season. Water temperature is still on the cold side. Uh, off the beach front here, I think it's about 45 to 47 degrees. That's Long Beach Island Surf. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know off the top of my head what the bay is. I probably should have looked before I shot the video, but I'm gonna guess it's probably in the, in the 45 to 50 degree range, depending on where you are. Um, that being said, there are some fish off the beach. Um, was kind of a few and far between. I still say it will and continue will, to will be a uh, few and far between. But there's a nice striped bass waiting yesterday on the south end. Um, it was caught on salted clam. Beautiful fish. I think it was uh, just, just shy of 20 pounds, um, if I remember correctly. There has been some bait off the beach, some bunkers, some, some gannets. Actually, as I'm taking a stroll here, there's a couple popping up along the way. Nothing crazy. Uh, like the video I showed, uh, say, a week or two back. Um, but definitely a couple, couple bombing up there. Uh, I'm sure if I turn around, you're not really gonna be able to see into the sun, but there's a couple of gannets back there. Uh, when I say a couple, there's probably four or five just kind of dropping along, doing a little kamikaze drops, uh, trying to grab some bait, trying to eat the breakfast here. Uh, some other things I can share as far as the fishing front goes, I heard some good perch fishing. That's normally good all of April. Uh, it's, it's good all winter, but you start seeing some of the creeks and lagoons start happening as well as the rivers. Um, perch fishing can be fun for the kids, fun for the family. That'll be fun for me too. Um, you want to go fish with some smaller hooks and grass shrimp, also some bloodworm. Use small little jigs too, little crappie jigs, and uh, you catch them on, on the jigs if, if they're thick. But yeah, other than that, we've got the winter flounder. Uh, we had a fish weighed in a couple days ago. That was uh, Brandy Hillgas. Uh, she's been putting some time in, catching some stripers, catching some, uh, she caught this winter flounder while she was bass fishing. I think got on like a, uh, I think it was a 4-0 circle hook, inline circle. So one more reason why maybe you want to scale down and fish some smaller hooks if you are light tackle worming on the bay side. There's other critters there and uh, you know, you may be looking to catch a striper, but stripers, uh, you catch plenty of stripers on say a 2-0 circle hook, no problem. Um, obviously it's a much, much bigger hook than I would want to fish if I was strictly targeting winter flounder, but um, if you're going to be fishing some worms and you're getting, kind of getting pecked off and bit up by the, uh, the winter flounder or maybe even the perch, going a smaller hook might be one opportunity, uh, one way to, uh, to capitalize on that. Another option that some anglers do is make a worm ball. Uh, there's a product, there's, there's uh, like a cheesecloth. Uh, we also sell a product called uh, Ghost Cocoon, which is a, which is a uh, bait thread. Um, some people use like a pantyhose spandex. I think I mentioned this in the past. Uh, there's also another product called Tulin, I believe. T-U-L-L-E, -L -L -E. it's like a mesh kind of fabric, almost like a wedding dress kind of uh, spandex fabric kind of thing. People use all sorts of different stuff. You know, you gotta, you gotta kind of think out, outside the box and uh, 
you know, create what you can when uh, the worm prices are through the roof. Um, and with that, you can make a little worm ball, and sometimes you catch more than one fish on one ball. Uh, sometimes you use one big worm, you know, fold it over, wad it up a couple times, um, or sometimes multiple worms. Always want to soak that in finescence, nice, great scent uh, that we stock at the shop. You can get that in cheddar crab, clam, bunker, uh, squid. There's a few different flavors there, a few different scents. You want to kind of gob that worm up, get, get it wrapped up nice, and then uh, scent it up. As far as the worm ball action, a uh, friend of the shop, friend of mine, Corey uh, Fishbin from Philly, got a beautiful striped bass, 46 incher on Sunday, fishing the Delaware River. Threw that up on our Instagram. I think that was uh, Sunday or Monday. We tossed it up. Got a lot of love there. Uh, definitely beautiful fish. And it's great to see that we've got some good quality fish moving into the state waters. Uh, I know a lot of the anglers um, have been fishing. They're starting to fish the rivers, getting into some good action. Uh, getting into, say, the, the bays. Uh, Raritan Bay obviously is one hot spot in the state every year. I know a lot of guys from the shop here, Team Fish Head's been up there getting into some fish. I know Max uh, said that fish were stacked up yesterday. We got in some good action yesterday after work. Um, but yeah, a lot of the guys in the shop are fishing. Me, not so much. Been, uh, been head deep in a whole bunch of projects, but starting to get that behind us. Just us jumped in a new e-com, a uh, new point of sale system new accounting software and all that good stuff. So I've been busy to say the, say the least. Um, with that said, I want to touch base a little about some bait situation. Uh, I mentioned we were getting into, you know, the, uh, the, the, the full moon, a new kind of transition period in April. We got some, uh, some new baits coming in, we got some clams. We haven't had fresh clam all year. We've had some salted clam, uh, which is a great bait, good, good hardy bait. It holds a long time. Um, so that's when, when the fishing is kind of slow and the bait sales are slow, that's what we try to do is always keep salted clam in stock. Much, much better than fishing frozen clam. You can at least cast it. Um, but yeah, we should uh, see some fresh clams either today, that's Tuesday, or tomorrow, Wednesday, or latest Thursday. Uh, fresh clams, great bait this time of year, especially if the drums show up. And I think with the full moon being here, the drums should be here any day. Uh, if not any day now, definitely soon uh, in, in, in the, say the next week or so. April's normally a good month for them. Also, May is a good month for black drum. Uh, while I'm talking about bait, some people are asking for bunker. As far as fresh bunker goes, I do not expect us to have any fresh bunker in stock anytime in the near future. Uh, normally, we'd start getting into the fresh bunker game uh, late April and um, for sure May. Say mid, mid to late April, maybe we'll get some in. But uh, right now, our local netters are not out and about going to get it, so we can't get it. Um, Talking about bait again, bloodworms. Definitely been a little bit of a struggle this year. I uh, had some good conversations with um, the people in the know up in Maine. Some people have been in the bait business for many, many years. And uh, while it's not a total catastrophe, there's definitely a crisis um, that we're all kind of witnessing and we're kind of all feeling down. We're somewhere at the end, you know, the trickle down here in Jersey at the, at the end of the supply chain um, where I wanted to kind of talk to the, to the, the diggers and, and the and the wholesalers and the worm buyers up in the north at the beginning of the food chain, uh, sorry, at the beginning of the um, supply chain to kind of get a grasp on what's really happening. And if anybody knows about bloodworms, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a harvested bait, just like, you know, bunker, you gotta go out and, and catch it. Um, you know, these, these diggers are going out and they're digging. Um, some people don't realize where worms come from. Most all bloodworms are coming from the state of Maine. Um, I believe it's the only aquaculture that Maine has that's not regulated. Uh, which is kind of something that, that might be a little scary and uh, you know just like the human nature you leave something up for um, for us to take care of ourselves normally we always screw it up as, as sad as that is but yeah uh, talking to some of the um, to the, the people in the business in Maine it's been on decline since the 80s uh, the, the heyday was kind of the 80s and 90s it's been on decline since then um, whether you want to call it uh, over harvesting whether you want to call it um, you know maybe some climate change in there um, and also mismanagement of, uh, say, you know, habitat. It's probably a little of all, all of it uh, combined and uh, blended into one to give us kind of a soupy mess. Um, with all that shared, I could say that this year we've had some beautiful worm deliveries and we've also had some small worm deliveries. Um, us, you know, at Fisherman's Headquarters, being a bait and tackle shop in New Jersey, we're sort of at the end of the line. Uh, we really can't pick and choose um, 
you know, when bait shows up, we get a bait delivery. Like, for example, right now we're very low on worms as I'm shooting this video here on Tuesday morning. Uh, we're low on worms. Everybody in the area wants worms. Uh, we get a delivery of some smaller ones. I really can't just tell my supplier um, I don't want them and refuse the delivery. I mean, yeah, I can. I can do whatever I want. But what's that going to do is it's going to leave me with no worms. And then potentially next worm delivery, I could be shorted because another person who needs them, who took them the week before, takes them again. And next thing you know, I'm off the list. Um, so working with suppliers I've worked with, we've been in business since 1962, working with some suppliers for a very long time. Some newer, actually, we got some newer suppliers recently and, uh, and um, obviously some staples too that, that really, uh, you know, ground us and keep us, um, you know, supply season in, season out in, in the, the tough times and the good. Um, we, we do our best to kind of communicate what's going on. Um, a lot of times the middlemen are just that, middlemen, they, they really are out of control of, of what they get. They're just doing their best to, to keep up with the supply and demand. Obviously with supply and demand, the price has been through the roof. Um, we feel bad with the price that we have to charge, but I mean, we're not in business to, to just open the doors and give everything away for free and lose money and, and close down. It's not why we, uh, you know, been running since 1962. So we try to do our best to, to offer the most competitive uh, prices on the best quality products that we can get. We're doing our best. I'm making a lot of phone calls every single week to try to get better worms, uh, try to get better pricing, try to have a better situation for all units so we can share out some better baits, better prices. Um, but yeah, one thing I can share while, I, while I'm talking, rambling about the, the blood worm kind of thing is I'm, I'm doing a blog uh, post. I'm, I'm actually going to Florida on uh, Thursday, a couple days. And I think while I'm, while I'm down there enjoying uh, some free time with the family, um, I don't know if anybody knows me, but I'm a pretty late owl. I stay up late uh, and really don't sleep much. Wake up early too. So uh, if I got some, you know, some free time there and everybody else is sleep with the family, I'll probably dive into a worm blog. Uh, and that's kind of what I started, putting some things together this week. Probably try to publish that, say maybe later this week or next week, just to kind of explain what's going on. Um, kind of want to dive in, just like I look at the fisheries uh, with striped bass. This is something that's kind of interesting to me with bloodworms and uh, kind of the export and, the, and, and what, what uh, Maine is putting out. Um, what they're harvesting um, and kind of where that's been going over the years. But uh, as we're talking to a friend up Maine, what he shared with me is that um, there's some muscle dredging. It's been taking place for years in the uh, rivers. And it's basically been destroying the habitat and the, uh, the seed beds for where these uh, wormers are and where these worms live. So destruction of habitat is definitely gonna be probably one of the lead causes of the issue uh, he shared there's been spots that would be pr productive uh, historically, very, very productive worm areas that are almost void of blood worms. Uh, and now what that does is push angler, uh, push harvesters out to other areas to then harvest in other areas. And, you know, there, there's obviously a lot of nooks and crannies in Maine. Maine's a big place. Um, I've only been there a few times. I don't know too much about it, so I don't want to speak on that. But there's, there's definitely different areas. And next, you know, people start um, leaving areas that are void that used to be their territory and going to other territory and people's you know, started to outfish other areas and it seems like it's a total mess. Um, I'm not an expert by any means on this topic. Just want to share kind of the information that I was provided and what people shared with me to kind of say, hey, you know, it's a bigger issue we've got going on and this is why. Um, I did mention that it's not regulated. I, I know there's been, uh, there's been talk about regulating the, the industry, but um, I, I think that anybody knows about regulation, fisheries, that it, it can be really good and it can be really bad all at the same time for the most part. I think every regulated fishery is somewhat of a disaster. Uh, I, I, I hate to say that, but it just seems like there's always a big bickering match. And, you know, the people that are fishing think they know more and the people that are doing science think they know more. And everybody just goes around in circles and um, nothing gets done. It turns into a political kind of uh, soupy mess. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave it all at that. Uh, I could dive into fisheries and politics, but um, that's not really uh, what, I, what I want to talk about today. Because next thing you know, we'll dive into uh, offshore wind and things get muddy fast. Um, so yeah, all that being said is an updated fish report. Hopefully you check out Fishing LBI and stay up to date with that blog. I try to do my best to get a blog out once a week um, this entire spring season. Try to get these videos at least once or twice a week as well. Um, hopefully you like this video uh, a little bit better. Hopefully the quality was, was a little better. Um, I tried my best to get a good video out and good quality. Tried to step up my game for this year. Decided to get a new, um, you know, say wireless mic that looks like I have a little voice box there on my, on my throat. Um, and also try to get a little stabilizer. I had one a while ago, tried it, it was a disaster. So I decided to get in the game and, and try a different one. So uh, shout out to Brian Casey, who uh, was like, hey man, this is the one you need. This is super easy to set up. And thanks to DJI for, for a quality product. 
seems to be working on this first stroll down the beach and hopefully the, uh, the video isn't as shaky as it used to be. Uh, long arm in the video like this was kind of getting old. Um, I'm sure I'll go back to it when I forget this contraption here. Uh, but for the most part, I'll try my best to keep this going. Try to get you guys informed with all the fishing information on Long Beach Island uh, week in, week out throughout the season. If there's any questions you guys have, feel free to send a message. Feel free to reach out to the shop. I'm super slammed, but I'll do my best to share what I can. Um, all the crew, the whole team at Fisherman's Headquarters is ready to serve you in any way. We're a big team and uh, you know, I couldn't do it without my team for sure. Everybody does a lot. And uh, to be honest with you, if you want to talk about local fishing, what's happening, they'll probably be the better resource than me right now because they're fishing every day. Um, day in and day out, they're on the water, they're catching fish. I haven't fished yet. Um, it's sad to say, I kind of feel uh, somewhat embarrassed to say that it's April and I haven't wet a line. Um, but that, that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles. I've been super slammed up and busy. Uh, getting things done at work, getting things done around the house. Um, actually got a whole lot more chores at the house to do and got a whole lot of chores to get going on the boat. I haven't even pulled the cover on the boat. It's been super slammed, like I said, with the, um, the upgrades and systems at the shop, but it's all for the better, trying to simplify some things, trying to update some things. Um, got a lot of new things coming for everybody. So, so keep, a, keep an eye out. Um, I appreciate everybody's business throughout the years. And I think you'll see in the near future, uh, you'll kind of get a rebound of a thank you of, um, some things. We're going to start up a loyalty program, uh, kind of a team fish heads club kind of thing. And uh, I was thinking about diving into more of a uh, private fish report thing, but that might be for next year. We'll see how that goes. Uh, just so I can share some more, say, detailed nitty gritty stuff and not, um, say, broadcast to the world, um, say, more, I don't want to say private, more specific stuff in somewhat of a small area. I know there's a lot of people that are looking for more detailed information, uh, whether they're new rookies um, or, or say intermediates looking to get more advanced or experts that just say maybe haven't been in the game uh, or been out of the loop for a little bit. So yeah, I kind of dove all over the place with this report. Hopefully it brought some value to you. But like I said before, be sure to check out fishermensheadquarters.com for shopping 24 seven and be sure to check out fishinglbi.com for a fish report blog that I try my best to keep up to date. Got some photos and some good detailed information there. Have a great day.